So good morning, folks. We've uh, heard many, many times inquiring about where to get a good cup of joe in town. And many of the locals said, hey, you've got to go buy Dose Coffee. We've got John here. Dosey. Cheers, mate. Cheers, brother. Oh, I like it. Yeah. So that's what you get when you come get a Dose. Beautiful. Tell me a quick blurb about the inspiration behind Dose. I understand uh, this is your baby, you and yeah. your partners, and you've grown it. It looks like you're flourishing. There's a great amount of people in there. Everyone's got a big smile. I just had the breakfast sandwich with the tofu. Yeah. So good. It's just work life, uh, work life balance and creating something for yourself that, honestly, the way that it all came about was like, we wanted to live here, yep. but we wanted to give back to the community and we wanted to be able to like, show what we could hey. do or offer as well, rather than just moving here and buying a house and living on our, on our own. Like we just really wanted to be able to a lot of passion. I, could, I feel and sense a lot of passion. And honestly, when we came here, there was only like three restaurants down the main street. So yeah. we really wanted to create something with good atmosphere, really, really good product, and great customer service. Most people that walk through those doors will get a hug on the way in. You know oh. what I mean? So. Previous night's sublime cocktails at Monashi Spirits Craft Distillery had us all a bit inquisitive on what made this establishment tick. Oh, there he is, there's Josh. All right, folks, today we have the great pleasure of stopping into Monashi Distillery Whoa. to meet uh, the head distiller, part mad scientist, part genius, uh, beautiful storefront uh, bar scenario going on here and uh, today we're going to get to learn more about the process of, of distilling gin. I also understand you guys make a wonderful uh, vodka. Uh, sounds like there's a lot in the works here. Yeah, we've got uh, whiskeys are coming out here soon as well and uh, less than six months the whiskeys will be going into bottles. Uh, they've been in there just shy of three years. Six months you guys put that on the calendar. Exciting day um, and then we're working on a uh, rum as well that's going to be coming out uh, hopefully in the next year. And I heard through the uh, the rumor mill that uh, the honeybees like to harvest up on the roof. The yeah, we, uh, we've got a rooftop apiary uh, up on the roof here. We've got three honeybee hives that we pull a lot of our own honey for that we use in the bar that we use in some of our spirits as well. Um, and with that honey, we're trying to make a Revy rum. Um, Revy caramelized rum. honey, uh, all from around Revelstoke. We want to donate a lot of the proceeds back into the community for awesome. the beekeepers here and get bee awareness going on. Um, and just do something different and new and uh, awesome. give back how we can. That's one, that's one of our main takeaways that I found here in the community. Everyone's community oriented and, and giving back. And we were just talking with John over at uh, the Dose Cafe. He had nothing, everyone's had nothing but good things to say about all the purveyors in town here. And uh, you know, we've been chatting up the locals on the chairs saying, hey, where should we go for a, a great place? And your, your, your place has come up numerous times. Oh, happy to hear. Monashi, Monashi, you gotta go meet this character named Josh. He's a storyteller. So Josh, tell me more about the, uh, the creation. What, how did it all transpire? Uh, I spent my life for 15 years specializing uh, in underwater welding and uh, wow. and working underwater my whole life. Did you ever play any underwater hockey? We have when we were uh, young in Saskatchewan where wow. I grew up. We'd cut holes in the ice, we'd flip upside down, inflate our dry suits with a tennis ball. 
<laughs> you played hockey upside down, ice diving. No shit. Um, that passion ever since I was a little kid, I wanted to spend my life underwater. Since I was five years old, my dream was to always be a deep sea diver, underwater welder. And frozen water is snow. Exactly. See? So, Close to oh, it. Oh, ice and <laughs> <laughs> uh, In that time, traveling around the world, working in all these countries, I just developed this passion for local and craft made spirits, beer, bread, coffee, everything that really just signified what local was about. Wherever I went in the world, I wanted to eat local bread. I wanted to eat the local food. I wanted to have coffee that was roasted locally, a beer that was made down the street. Um, my career ended uh, about five years ago, six years ago, I had a bad accident, uh, motocross uh, riding. Oh, that'll get you. <laughs> yeah. Double ups. Yeah, it was off of a double. Um, just, yeah, I uh, came up a little short. Sorry to hear that. Looks like you're recouping well. Well, you know, I put a few pounds on, but you know, I didn't change that. <laughs> well, hey, speaking of local sourcing, are you able to source? Uh, I know you guys have a lot of berries in the yeah. community, in the area. We use, so just for our gin alone, we'll use uh, local Revelstoke uh, juniper, huckleberry, spruce tips, ponderosa pine, wildflowers. Oh. Uh, all go into our gin. Um, we've done a spruce tip gin as well this year with local Revelstoke spruce tips. As soon as they came into bloom in, uh, in May and started growing the little buds up, we went and harvested oh. tons of them underneath the power lines. Free for the taking. We froze them uh, in Ziploc bags down in the freezers, and then when the time is right for this Christmas, we release a spruce tip gin, which is just phenomenal. This will tell you your heart out. Exactly. That sounds delicious. Ethos is the defining characteristics of a community or a culture. Ah. So we really wanted to bottle Revelstoke and Re to put that Re into a bottle. Yeah, we wanted that when you go home at the end of the day, wherever you're from in this world, when you pour a drink of that spirit, the smell, the taste, oh, it'll bring you back, you back. Oh. to this little town and you remember your this time here. This is a place I definitely want to come back to in memory and in person and uh, I'll keep it on the down low. Perfect. Revy sucks. Tell your friends. Oh man, it sure does. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, just just kind of like a little twist on certain dishes, just kind of make it a bit more Asian-y. So we have like um, Thai chicken salad, which is we make our own Thai curry, uh, cashew cream vinaigrette, and then put it all together. It's delicious, one of my favorite salads yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. And it has like a nice little hint of the Asian inspiredness to it. What about yourself, snowboarder, skier? Uh, I'm a snowboarder. I've been snowboarding for about 15 years now. Yeah, yeah and I can still hurt myself. Yeah, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I love it. That's one of the main reasons why everyone's here, right? Everyone's yeah, here for the snow. So exactly. that's one of the, my biggest moves was I enjoyed the snow. I read here a couple times before I moved out here. I saw that real powder and I just couldn't turn away. Yeah, it's amazing, this mountain. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. it's beautiful. There's so much terrain. And like I said, one of the most amount of snows I've ever ridden on besides Japan. Well, man, you're running an absolute tight ship up there. It's, Thank it's, you. it's on point with Thank everything. You. And um, yeah, best of luck to you. Thank, Thank you, you for uh, being part of Snow Chef. Absolutely. Awesome. After copious amounts of vertical, glades, tree runs, and long steep groomers on Revy Mountain, our thighs and minds burnt out. It was off to bed for a well-earned sleep with our eye on the prize of breakfast at Main Street Cafe the next morning before embarking further along the Powder Highway. Good morning, folks. We have the privilege of eating at the one, the only, the Main Street Cafe here in downtown Revelstoke with uh, Chef Matt, the proprietor. Um, thanks for having us this morning. Thanks for, coming. thanks for having a chat. So how long have you been at the Main Street? Uh, this has been four and a half years now since I bought the place. Uh, four and a half? Yeah, and it was, uh, it was already a breakfast restaurant, but it was, uh, I, I took it and changed a lot of it. And you, you, made it you made it your home, yeah, right? right? Very cool, very cool. And. Uh, We've been chatting with locals on the chair, on the Gandhi, throughout town, asking them where they love to eat, and everyone said, there's only one place to have breakfast. <laughs> and this came up numerous, numerous times, so we had to get here and uh, see what was going on. And I'm just having a look at the menu. It's pretty extensive. Yeah, yeah we'll uh, I try to bring all, all I had from my past experience into it and, and, and change. We do like a lot of classic, and we do a lot of uh, more like Different, different dish that we eat. So where, where are your roots? Where did your cooking evolve from? Is it a self-taught? Did you go to school? Um, well, I mostly self-taught and then um, I, I worked in a lot of ski resorts uh, across Canada and, and, and then I went to work on super yacht. For, uh, a super yacht? Yeah, for ah. five years I did super yachts. Where about? Uh, mostly around France, Italy, and Spain. Wonderful. That must have been a great experience. Yeah, it was great. It was great. And um, yeah, I learned a lot from that. Well, we can't wait to uh, get into some of this food. Oh, yeah, cool. Looking yeah. forward to it. Thanks so much for your time. Yeah. Pleasure. Revy was all things idyllic ski town. Home to fantastic food venues and a booming craft drink scene of breweries and distilleries. Using ingredients sourced from their backyard, fused into beverages that emulate the vibe of the town. You are truly tasting Revelstoke at every turn. In this town, it's quite evident, it's all about the real Stoke. <laughs> 